This is ABC 15 Mornings. One great thing about the Valley, summer starts early and you don't have to go too far to find a pool party. We're breaking down the tips you need to know to help your kids stay safe when they jump in. Celebrating diversity on campus, how a Valley Club for high schoolers is helping kids go places. It's so awesome to sell cookies to basically a superstar. And a once in a lifetime experience. Devin Booker is uplifting Arizona by going above and beyond for a local Girl Scout troop. It's a story that you don't want to miss. And we don't want you to miss these views this morning either. If you haven't opened the windows and the blinds just yet, you should. Gorgeous start to the day out there, Arizona. Live view of Tempe Town Lake at this hour. You can see a few high, thin clouds shaping up to be a gorgeous sunrise. You can send us your pics. Email share at abc15.com. We're so glad you're starting your Sunday off with us. I'm Nohe Lani Graff. And I'm Mark Thompson. And Nohe, for the second day in a row, a little warm this morning as I was mm -hmm. getting yep. ready, trying to get moving and stuff like that. Air conditioning is kind of kicking on just a little bit. I don't have it set where it's, you know, going to be chilly in the house, but mm -hmm. I at least have it knocking out some of that heat humid heat yeah. that's in the air. Yeah, and, and we actually, we didn't turn on the AC. We kept it off and, yeah. and went with the fans, but the AC is going to be coming in the coming days. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it does feel nice if you step outside this morning and you want to go for a run. It's great weather to do it because you don't need the sweater anymore, the heavy jacket. Live view of the Papagos, and here are some of those colors that we're seeing because of the clouds that have moved in. We do have some sun breaks as well. Temperatures are mild in the Phoenix metro area. It's 65 degrees, so it is just a hair warmer than it was this time yesterday, but we do have 50s in our outlying valley cities and those light breezes around seven miles an hour. Those breezes are making all the difference. They certainly did for us yesterday. My family went out to the Chandler Jazz Fest in the afternoon and it was great weather out there. So if you are going for that run this morning, maybe along the lakeside, it'll be in the 60s through the seven o'clock hour and by 10 we're in the mid 70s. Then by two o'clock we're already working our way into those low 80s today, which is where we'll stay low to mid 80s. 80 is that forecast high. The clouds are going to continue to build as well this afternoon, but we will stay dry. And then the warming trend sets in this next week. I will walk you through that coming up in that full most accurate forecast. No, hey, thank you. Now to an update on this morning's breaking news out of Sacramento, California, an early morning mass shooting near the California State Capitol. We're taking a live look right now at the scene. Police there now confirming six people are dead and nine people are injured. Officers are expected to hold a press conference soon. We'll pass along any updates as they come into the newsroom. We do have new developments to share with you now in a story we first brought you as breaking news 24 hours ago. We are now learning a 21 year old was shot and killed outside of a Phoenix hookah lounge near 35th Avenue and Greenway. Investigators tell us Zion Parker was shot multiple times. He did die at the scene. Our crew saw at least one person detained yesterday morning, but Phoenix PD hasn't said if any arrests have in fact been made. This one's tough. Another toddler rushed to the hospital last night after nearly drowning in a valley pool. And this comes just a day after a three year old girl did lose her life after being pulled from a pool at a home in Phoenix. Yeah, and every year we hear dozens of stories like this, unfortunately. And this morning, ABC 15's Luz Delia Cabrero is taking some action, looking at the new efforts and a time tested way to keep your loved ones safe around the water. The Phoenix Fire Department launching a new water safety campaign called Drowning Zero to help bring awareness and a valley company doing its part to help keep kids safe. Tragically, we witness this all too often. Phoenix Fire Chief Michael Duran talking about drownings during a mock drowning event, saying this can be prevented. Never leave your children alone unattended in a pool. Always have a designated child watcher. Use an approved barrier to separate the pool from the house. Never allow children to be alone near a pool or any water source. Including bathtubs, toilets, ponds, and canals. Walk it back. Mike Gerlach, the owner of Desert Pool Safety, says requests for pool safety nets are starting to climb. It's a time of year, you know, where we're getting out and enjoying their pools. As you can see, the, the kids can't get into the pool and um, it still keeps the backyard open and, and the aesthetics nice. And his wife, Lauren Hausen, says while fences are great barriers. By the time the kids are about two, three, four even, they're going to try to go up and over that fence. So the net is good because once you lock it, you know that that net is going to be locked until you 
physically take the key and unlock it. Adding, it creates a safe distance between the surface of the water and the net. She had enough distance that if she does breathe in, she's not going to get the water. So far this year, there have been four near drownings and four drownings involving children in the valley. Last year, we had 32 near drownings and 17 drownings. Chief Duran also reminding folks in the unfortunate event a child falls in, every second counts. Learn CPR. These lessons could save a life one day. Lustelia Caballero, ABC 15, Arizona. New for you this morning, Maricopa County is changing the way they track mosquitoes. Remember last year's record number of West Nile virus cases? It was really unnerving. So they're soon going to be counted weekly and to keep better tabs on the situation. The county also says that more traps are being added to densely populated areas. After everything was over last year, that's what we looked at this year and said, well, we need to add traps in these these areas so that we have a weekly surveillance. And so far this year, there are no human cases of West Nile. The county says they will have fogging companies on standby in case there's another West Nile outbreak. Also a reminder to you to check for standing water around your homes. That helps keep the population down. New video this morning showing a huge citywide party Look in Chapel it. Hill, North Carolina. The Tar Heels beating their arch rival Duke in the final four last night, beating coach Mike Krzyzewski as his last game was that one uh, as coach of the Blue Devils. I, I, he was really gracious in his interviews yep. afterwards. Uh, the Phoenix Suns, though, there's a connection here. Cam Johnson, he couldn't be more excited. You might remember he's a UNC grad and his little brother Puff plays for them right now. So that's the two of them having a sweet moment after the game. He was able to catch it. He says he flew out right after practice yesterday. It was an amazing game. That was the bottom line as you really didn't know until mm -hmm. the last second. The clock had to zero out to be sure who won that one. It was crazy. So UNC now set for a matchup with Kansas in the national championship and that's tomorrow. The Jayhawks of course beating Villanova yesterday afternoon in the early game. So Jayhawks and Tar Heels. Yeah, and another battle of the Blue Bloods also happening tonight in the Women's Basketball National Championship game. UConn taking on South Carolina. Tip off for that one is at 5 p.m. Closer to home, the Guardian Games are back. Local law enforcement this week teaming up with Special Olympics. It's a really awesome community event. Yeah, they hosted the opening ceremonies at Westgate with a torch run, just like the Olympics, followed by a friendly uh, matchups in Sports like street hockey, soccer, basketball, and several others. They love this event. The, the, the athletes, they, they wait for this. It's one of their favorite days. It's my favorite thing to do, to say hi to everyone, to meet to everybody. And the event is a way to empower children with disabilities, and it also helps raise money for the Special Olympics of Arizona. And you see local law enforcement letting them check out the rigs, too, <laughs> while yeah. they're there. A high school club in Mesa is helping kids go places. Our Kaylee O'Kelly is showing us how this opportunity gives kids a chance to just be themselves. We're all better if we learn more about each other. Cornelius Turner is the senior counselor at Red Mountain High School in Mesa. Um, I help students uh, graduate and navigate uh, their post high school life and prepare people for, for life, for real life, yeah. He also sponsors one of the newest clubs on campus. The Black Student Union, this is their, our first year uh, running it full time. Uh, it is, our goal is to um, bring attention and awareness to um, historical black uh, figures in society. Uh, we wanna celebrate uh, those individuals as well as all Americans. Mr. Turner is teaching kids to celebrate their past, navigate the present, and look toward the future. The main thing I, I want to express um, and that we try to communicate is the value of self-respect, um, understanding who you are. Um, we discuss how the world works, whether it's um, fair or unfair. Um, we discuss how to navigate that. Um, and we, and we really encourage um, being the best that you can be. I think it's important to have a community like this because you can go in and you know that you're not going to be judged or looked at differently because of the things you have gone through. So here, even if you don't know them personally, you know that they have sort of like the same ideas as you if they're coming to this club and you can share how you're feeling without fear of being ridiculed or judged or anything. 
Red Mountain High School's Black Student Union, helping kids go places. If I can help one student see um, something they didn't see in themselves, that's, that, that feels great. Kaylee O'Kelly, ABC 15, Arizona. And for their efforts in helping kids go places, the Red Mountain High School Black Student Union is getting a $1,000 gift card courtesy of the Valley Toyota dealers. And isn't that what teaching is all about? It changing is. even just one life. If you know a Valley Youth program making a big impact like that, but they don't have the supplies or the resources that it needs, take action. Go to abc15.com slash kids go places and go ahead and nominate them to give them that chance to win a thousand bucks to go toward their program and and be featured right here on ABC 15 Arizona. If you are planning to take off for vacation this summer, you may run into some disorderly flyers. Passengers cause problems are a little more common these days. What you need to know before making a scene. Plus, he's a man of the people, of course. J.J. Watt causing quite the stir in Old Town Scottsdale yesterday. We're going to show you why he was out there rocking that Suns jersey in a little bit. Want to get to more of your morning headlines? An overnight Russian airstrike hit critical infrastructure in Ukraine's port city of Odessa. New video shows a fuel depot on fire there. You see the flares. Black plume, though, is mostly what's taking over the city there. The city says that a missile defense system did slow down the attack and add that they are working to put out those fires. Right now, police are searching for a hit and run driver who killed a man on his bike near 16th Street in Portland Friday night in the downtown Phoenix area. We're told the driver just sped off without even calling police. The bicyclist was rushed to the hospital where he did later die. Investigators are working to find out the make and model of the car to be on the lookout for as well. When we learn, we'll let you know. An armed robbery suspect wanted in Sedona was killed yesterday in a shootout with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. That suspect has been identified, has not been identified, but we're told they did open fire on troopers when they tried to conduct that traffic stop on the I-40. Some flights to and from Sky Harbor are being canceled or even delayed because of a pilot walkout at Alaska Airlines. About 200 of the airline's flights have been canceled already, while some of those at Sky Harbor, some of them are at Sky Harbor. Most of the pain is really being felt at some other airports. This is the Flight Aware Misery map. Most of the issues are in the Northeast as well as Miami. You see those areas of red there. Keeping with the theme, fights on flights. Unfortunately, it's happening all too often nowadays. And as more of us start making those summer vacation plans, the hope is the friendly skies will return as well. Unruly passengers have become a bit too common over the past few years. As soon as we get in later, you're going to jail. Leading to innocent victims. She punched me in the face, she spit in my face, and she scratched my cheek with a fingernail. Russell Miller was assaulted on a flight a few months ago by another passenger. I was surprised at how far it went. I thought maybe me interjecting myself would convince her to go to the back of the plane, and she absolutely refused. COVID has changed people. Um, they're not the same as they are. Their patience is much less. Since the start of the pandemic, the Department of Justice has charged dozens of people for interfering with flight crews. And over the past three months, the FAA has reported close to a thousand unruly passenger incidents. The FAA is strictly enforcing a zero tolerance policy toward passengers who cause disturbances on flights and those who cause problems on planes face hefty fines. As the pandemic subsides, the hope is more people will become a lot more tolerant. Check yourself. We're all putting up with exactly the same situations. Well, the TSA recently extended the mandate for face masks on flights to April 18th, but after that, it's expected to be done with. No hit. 
Well, let's talk about that most accurate forecast because we are still getting a lot of visitors to the valley here because this is in general still a great time of year for us, even if we are warming up a little bit for our tastes here. Temperatures this morning though are great. It's really comfortable out there. It's nice and cool if you want to get out for an early morning bike ride or just walking the dog around the neighborhood. We're in the 50s in some areas like Maricopa, Chandler, Levine, Surprise. Wickenburg is in the upper 50s right now. So is Anthem. We're at 55 in Apache Junction as well. Across the rest of the state, we've got a mixed bag of 40s, 50s, and 60s to our south, 60s out to our west. We're in the 40s this morning in areas like Prescott and Payson and north of the rim. While we're in the 40s in Shola, we're still in the 30s in Heber and 20s in Flagstaff at the Grand Canyon. Clouds and radar over the last six hours, you can see more of that high cloud clever has started to move in over the state, and that's going to continue to build as we move through the afternoon, but we'll stay dry. Our air quality is actually pretty good for today, but that UV index is going to stay very high. So we're talking about just a 15 minute burn time. So even if there are times with that cloud cover, you still can get a bad sunburn. So make sure you're reapplying your sunscreen often, especially on the kiddos. If you're taking out out to the park today or maybe one of the splash pads that are now running around the valley. I know we've been slowly checking them all out as well. Temperatures this morning stay in the 60s through about 8 o'clock by 10. We're in the mid 70s, hitting the 80s after lunchtime and then climbing. We'll peak around 4 o'clock once again today. Our highs across the valley, 85 is that high in Mesa and Tempe, as well as Awatuki, a couple degrees above that in Maricopa for today. Low 80s from Santan Valley through Fountain Hills, 80 degrees in Cave Creek, and we'll be 84, 85 across the West Valley today. So keep that in mind if you're going out to spring training. Rest of the state north of the rim will find the coolest temperatures if you want to take the drive up there. 50s in Flagstaff, 60s if you head east out to Sholo. If you want to stay a little closer, upper 60s for Prescott and Payson, but we'll reach the 70s in Sedona, and we're staying warm out to our west and across the southern portion of the state with highs in the mid 80s. You see the cloud cover on future sticking around through the afternoon. Then by six o'clock, those dinner time hours will have a little more clearing here in Phoenix, but the clouds will mostly clear out by Monday statewide, and then we'll have bright sunny skies. We'll also get that warm up underway. Upper 80s back tomorrow, but at least still in the 80s before the 90s show up on Tuesday. And then right now the 90s look to stick around and keep us about 10 degrees above the average for this time of year. It'll be dry for the next seven days as well. And notice those morning lows in the 60s and even upper 60s at that for the middle portion of the week. So definitely about time to start ditching the jackets, Mark. Oh boy, here it comes. All right, Noah, thank you. An MVP both off and on the court. Coming up, the huge surprise Valley Girl Scouts got from Suns star Devin Booker. Our Phoenix Suns, they've got a chance to make history today, but they're going to have to do it without a few key players. Coach Monty Williams says he plans to rest Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton for today's game against the Thunder as the team has already secured the overall number one seed, which matters more to them than, you know, making history because it's a record thing mm -hmm. for, for them. The overall number one seed. Meantime, Jay Crowder is out with an ankle injury. If the Suns can get a win, though, they would break that franchise record for the most wins in a season. Tip-off is at four today. Also, while the team tries to make history on the court, they've already made a huge impact off of it. Sun star Devin Booker doing big things in our community. ABC 15's Cameron Pullum sharing an uplifting story of how he's making a difference for local Girl Scouts. And in my head, I'm like, oh my goodness. It was so awesome to sell cookies to basically a superstar. Daphne Thomas and Penelope Ruiz were starstruck. The thrilling encounter happening outside the Footprint Center as the two were setting up a cookie stand for a photo shoot. We were taking pictures. Suddenly, on a hoverboard, Go comes up with the phone. He's like this, and he shows the phone up to us. The Sun's Gorilla delivering an urgent message. What's up, ladies? How are you doing? I'm good. I actually have a surprise for you guys. And I want to let you know that I want to purchase all of your cookies. Really? The heartfelt gesture in honor of Women's History Month. Make sure you guys get them to all the lady workers down at the arena for me. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 
Of course, that's just what they did. We were so excited. We were literally dumping all the cookies into the wagon. I like how he's doing that for girls like Gus because women do a lot, and that's why we celebrate a special month. Books had a soft spot for these adorable Arizona Girl Scouts for a while, donating a huge check after hearing from Penelope about the organization's need for a new bus. Our mini bus broke down. We need money to fix it. And that's when he fixed it and started supporting the Girl Scouts. It's a spirit of giving that's left a lasting impact, both on the community and, of course, on his new biggest little fans. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you, Devin Booker. Go Suns! For Uplifting Arizona, I'm Cameron Polum, ABC 15. Those girls are such characters, too. I love it. The one throwing him a kiss. You got to get it while you can, girl. And then the other little girl, women's do a lot. That's you right. That was my it. favorite you line right there. said it. <laughs> and you know what? It's not just D-Book. Sun star Mikhail Bridges taking some time out this weekend to play a round of top golf with some of his young fans. That was actually part of the Bridges Brightest Ballers charity. It honors student athletes. So the winners got to spend the afternoon with the star. They got a free computer to help with their schoolwork as well. So pretty amazing. Our sons are really, they're really doing what they can for the community they to make sure their mark. Are. Just love it. Also, Cardinals D, D lineman JJ Watt also hanging out with fans this weekend, even rocking the throwback Suns jersey. So we're going to cross pollinate our sports a little bit here. We're all fans. <laughs> yeah, and he put out an invitation on social media telling fans to meet him for a few beers at Coach House in Old Town. And this is what happened. All right, I said I want to go to a dive bar and have some beers with the Cardinals fans. So we're going to go to a dive bar and have some beers with the Cardinals fans. Hopefully we just have a good time, have some beers and enjoy ourselves on this beautiful Saturday. So hope to see you guys soon. Coach House, see you there. I think they did have a good time. He yeah. looks all smiles. He had a strict deadline to get home from his afternoon plans, though, because he said he had to watch the Final Four game with his wife because she went to UNC and won a national championship in soccer while she was there. That is a house of athletic winners, that's for sure. Both of them dipping in the gene pool. That is Oof. pretty competitive, any games they play. Oh my goodness, can you imagine <laughs> if she had gone with him to play the, the spin golf <laughs> <Yeah>. game? <laughs> Still to come on ABC 15 Weekend Mornings, housing costs just keep going up, but for two Arizona cities, that trend could change sooner than later. We're gonna show you where on the other side of this break.